it's Jessica, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon with Waltz's Roots. So, in the last episode, uh, we finally broke Waltz's curse, so he's back to normal. But, unfortunately, he wasn't able to save everybody to get out of the palace. He was only able to save um, Rod's family and himself, because Lucette pushed him into the portal that he made to escape. And now Lucette is trapped in the castle with her father. And she's smart enough to not bring Waltz with us, because if Waltz were to stay, they would have killed him. And knowing Lucette, they won't kill her because they need her. So now we're with the father trying to get out of the palace. Let's see what happens. I feel that I cannot trust my eyes because it, in it is indeed Mother standing before us. Oh yeah, they ran into Mother in the crystal. So this is interesting. So she's in this route. I want her to be in this because I wanted her to encounter Waltz and I wanted to see like what she would say. Because we also learned that she murdered his entire family, which is really messed up. She looks the same as when I last saw her. Like she's just been sleeping all this time. What is Hildur doing here? Is that the Chrysalum Tenebrium? She looks like she's been trapped inside the crystal, but how? No, she passed on four years ago. This is impossible. A lovely surprise, isn't it? What did I tell you? This guy, this guy, he he fans boy too much with the mother. Also, I feel like he just he's one of those people who just hangs out and like makes a shrine of the mother there. <laughs> The king immediately moves to stand in front of me. Sir Mythos saunters towards us with a wide smile on his face, looking abrupted. Isn't she exquisite? Even her slumber, she's still so beautiful. He's so weird! <laughs> what is the meaning of this, Mythos? When Mythos does not answer, the king reaches for his knife and frowns. What exactly are you and Alcaster planning? I am offended that you are associating the two of us. My goals are different from Alcaster's. My only wish is to see my queen again. Alcaster's the only one who is after your throne. What are you going to do with mother? I plan to revive her. What? I stared at Sir Mythos shocked. Revive mother? Is it even possible to bring the dead back? She is alive, dear princess. My queen is only sleeping. Her link to the Tenebrium allows her to survive all those years. She infused the last of her power within the crystal and merged with it. She was wise, yet even as his light grows dimmer, so too does the light of her own life comes close to being extinguished. Once you finally have accepted your role as the new bearer of the Crystalum Tenebrium, her link with it, with it will be severed, and she will die. That's why I need you, princess. I need your powers to bring her back to life. What? Only on your 18th birthday, you will inherit the Crystal's powers, and with that power, you will revive my queen. Isn't that what you always wanted? To have your beloved mother back? I... It is true that I have always wished for mother to come back. But Dolores and Parfait told me the truth, and now that is the last thing that I want. I like this! In, in uh, Fritz's route, we didn't get a chance to have the impression of uh, Dolores or Parfait on Lucette because they couldn't influence her to show her that her mother was evil. So at least this time around, Lucette's like, no, mother's bad, we don't need her here. What if mother ruins the kingdom once again? I will not let that happen. I will not let my kingdom fall into darkness again. The king charges towards Sir Mythos. Dude, don't do it! Ugh, with a knife in hand. He's a witch, yo! What are you doing? But Sir Mythos easily sends him flying back with a flick of his wrist and a magic spell. The knife falls to the ground to just a few feet where I'm standing. Your majesty! I am about to run to him when Varg steps out of the darkness and the, of the room and points his sword towards the king's throat. Don't move, princess, otherwise my hand might slip. I freeze in spot. He has been here the whole time? Now, princess, you have an important decision to make. Help me revive the queen and save the king. Or run away and he dies. My life is nothing compared to the lives that will be lost if Hildur is brought back. I would gladly trade my life for any of the lives she would steal. Foolish king, you can't gamble your life when it's no longer in your hands. Sir Mythos growls at the king before facing me once again. He flashes a crooked smile. How about it, princess? I... Ah! Uh, no! What the hell? I don't want to pick! What do I say to this? Like, seriously. If we just run away, the mother comes back, and then also the king dies, but if we agree... Uh... God damn... I'm gonna save. Oh no! What do I do? Is... Oh no, the right answer is decline, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Because we don't want the mother to come back, and but the oh, the dad has to die. Fuck. 
Can't let Sir Mythos kill the king, but I can't let him revive Mother either. If I can just improvise, I might be able to hold them long enough for some some back backup to arrive. I catch a glimpse of the king's knife, which is just a few feet away from me when an idea strikes me. Well, it's our fate, Dolor. They have to come for us. I refuse. What? Sir Mythos looks at me irritated. The king, however, looks relieved. The king's blood shall be on your hands then, Varg. I quickly lean down and pick up the knife and hold it to, m to my neck. Princess, what are you planning to do with that? Put that knife down before you hurt yourself. Ah, she's pulling Varg. <laughs> Let the king go or I will kill myself. I know you need me to revive mother. Huh. Don't take me for a fool, princess. I know you do not have the courage to die a, a martyr. Annoying simmers within me. Oh, are you sure of that? I swallow as I press the blade to my neck. Damn, she's hardcore! I feel the sharp edge cut through my skin, the, but the blade does not go deep enough to hit any vital parts. I cringe as my body is raked with pain and the tears blur my vision. I'm scared. You fool! Sir Mithros' face is pale as he attempts to step towards me. Now you see my resolve. Let the king go, Mithros. Mithros curses under his breath, his outstretched hand clenching into a tight fist before he draws it back. It's working! I feel myself relaxed, but my hope is short-lived and foolish. What the hell is he doing now? Mythos casts a spell and the knife goes hot in my hand. A scream escapes my mouth as I fall to the floor and clutch up my injured hand. You have been a very bad princess. Your mother would be disappointed in you. I glare at Mythos, but only clicks his tongue, face stern. This would have been so much more pleasant if you had chosen to work with me, princess. I will get what I want, princess. Even if I must break you to revive my queen, I will do it. I will suffer the consequences for it later. What a bitch! This guy is too much of a fanboy that you're willing to kill the queen's daughter. You think that's gonna go over- Once again, this guy thinks this is gonna go over well with him. <laughs> Mythos turns to Varg. Varg, put them both in the cells. Oh, he doesn't kill the king. Okay. I take a few steps back as Varg approaches us. All I manage to do is back myself into a wall. Varg looks at me, amused, like a cat toying with a mouse. He takes another step, but I do not get to see the moves he makes afterwards. A bright light engulfs the area, inciting an ag agitated hiss from Mithros. Magic, but how? When the light clears, Varg is still standing. His eyes are on my feet. I follow his gaze. Ah! We got it! We broke our curse! My shoes have been replaced with two beautiful glass slippers. I... I broke my curse? What did I do? You saved the king! <laughs> the king looks at me. His eyes haze. He opens the mouth to speak, but then stops when Mythos comes to hover over him, his expression fixed into a glare. Oh, how charming. But your broken curse will not help you now, princess. Now, be a good girl and allow Varg to escort you to your cell. Varg takes us to one of the prison cells and locks us up. This time, be a good girl and don't try to escape. I scowl at him. He only smirks in response. Feisty as always. He flashes me a lopsided smile before taking his leave. Lucette. The, queen ki the king quickly takes my hand in his and pulls me down to the floor to sit beside him. He reaches into his pocket, then withdraws a handkerchief. What is he doing? He neatly folds the cloth and leans towards me. I cringe back in reflex. He gingerly presses the handkerchief onto my injured skin. I cringe as I feel the pain. I'm so sorry, Lucette. Your injury is my fault. What? No! We were trying to save you, dude! You have nothing to apologize for. I did it to save you, and yet, here we are. I'm the one who owes you an apology. I turn my gaze away in shame. The king cuffs my cheek and I turn my head so that I am facing him. The gesture is so gentle it moves me to tears. A father should be the one to protect his child, always. His face is twisted in pain as he stares at me, eyes brimming with tears. I see the recognition in his eyes. Having reunited with my father like this makes me realize that I still cared for him. Please forgive me. I already have. The words that take great weight off my heart. It is as if the ice has been shrouding it for so long that it's finally melting away. Aww, that's sweet. Without another word, my father throws his arms around me, trapping me into a warm embrace. This is the first time he's ever hugged me. I feel tears brimming in my eyes, and soon I am crying as I bury my face into my father's shoulder. I'm sorry, please forgive me, my dear daughter. We stay like this for what seems like a lifetime, leaning against each other and crying, silently asking for forgiveness. Once we are more relaxed, I sit down beside my father and tell him what transpired since I was cursed. His expression becomes darker with every word that I speak. You've suffered so much and I have not been able to erase that suffering in any way. No, my life as a commoner showed me things I, have ne I had never appreciated before. It was more fulfilling than my life in the palace. 
the moment I became cursed might be the moment I started truly living. Oh, yeah, it's true. And then she started to do stuff because, you know, Waltz was helping her as well. Oh, that's nice. I like her relationship with her father in this room because she's much more, um, you know, forgiving with him in this one. Because she was kind of with in Karma's room, but we didn't really get to, like, talk with him, so this is nice. I take a deep breath as I contemplate the question that has been in my heart this all this time. Your Majesty, have you ever loved me? I am terrified, but I still force myself to look right at the king. I've always loved you, Lucet. I value you more than my own life. You are my everything, my daughter. Oh no! Please tell me he doesn't die, because that's too sad if he does. I blink at him, my eyes filled with tears. I waited so long to hear those words from you. If you loved me, why were you not there for me? Why did you let Mother do this to me? Was it because I was her daughter? It is true that you are her daughter, but you are also mine. I don't even remember how we- His voice trails off and he avoids my eyes. He sighs softly. I was put under a spell that night. Oh no! Ew! Because there was- Because people were talking about this in the comments too, like, if- If obviously this guy doesn't love, like, Hilda, right? And then how did they- How did Lucette happen? Oh, that's gross. That's disgusting, dude. Months later, you came along. I thought I could never ruin myself to love you, not when you were the witch's daughter. But you were different. She was darkness and you were light. And then she corrupted you. Hilda forbade me to get close to you. She was afraid that I would influence you to betray her. She told me that she would steal you away completely if I ever approached you. Wow! What a bitch! I couldn't bear the thought of losing my own daughter, so I did as I she demanded. I had to watch you grow up from afar. I had to push you away. So yeah, I was right. She she was threatening him to stay away from Lucette. The only thing I could do for you was to help you celebrate your birthday every year. The birthday surprises every year. The letters that led me to the secret birthday rooms. Oh no, but that's him! Yeah, I kind of figured it was the dad, but that's so sad. <laughs> Those surprises were always the highlights of my birthday this whole time. It was you who planned those surprises? I could not let you know that it was I who planned those surprises. The beautiful smile that you had on your face when you saw all of your gifts was more than enough. I'm really sorry for everything you said, for not being a good father, for not being there for you, pushing you away. After your mother died, he pauses and then shakes his head. After I had thought she died, I thought I might make it up to you, but I failed miserably as your father. You were already so far away from me. I tried to get close to you, but I drove you away. I do not blame you. I think back to all those times when he tried to talk to me or approach me. I would always walk away or refuse to talk to him. Because I hated him, I was convinced he didn't love me. I tried, but I tried too late and not hard enough. I should have tried better to understand you. I should have tried hard to see what your mother had done to you. I have never expected any sort of forgiveness, and yet you still gave it to me. But now I am a loss for as to what I can do to make it up to you. But you're here now, right? I smile at him hesitantly, and he smiles back. He leans forward to place a kiss on my forehead, even as to wipe away the tears. Oh, I love you, Lucette. I... Love you too, father. He rests his hand on my cheek. Allow me to make it up to you. Allow me to protect you. No! Don't say that. Because if he says that, that means this man is gonna sacrifice himself for Lucette. I already know. Don't do it. Don't. Oh no, don't. They just had a nice moment. <laughs> Can I bring her back, Lucette? There would be too many consequences. But if I refuse to help them, they will kill you. Father shakes his head and smiles. If I have to give up my life to give you and or kingdom a brighter future, so then so be it. Princess, it's almost time to go! Father moves to stand in front of me. I won't let you take her. Varg doesn't answer. He suddenly taps his cane on the ground, creating the same energy force as before, sending Father back into the wall with an invisible force. Father! Father staggers back to his feet and gazes at me with a pained expression. Don't do this, Lucette! I ball my hands into tight fists. I have no choice. I'm sorry, father, but I cannot let them kill you. I tried to smile at him, reassuring before walking away with Bark. Oh no, so she does it anyway. The last thing I hear him calling my name before Bark closes the door and there's a silence in the hallway. I am once again standing in front of mother's crystallized form. It's time, princess. Now put your hands over the crystal. I stare at mother's crystallized form in silence, but fear taking a hold of my body. 
Time is of the essence, princess. I do as I command and set my hands on the surface of the crystal. Oh god, here we go. Mother's coming back. <laughs> Moments later, the, cock, the clock strikes 12 and my body suddenly grows heavy. A strange power begins to flow through me. Oh, what is happening? I attempt to pull my hands back, but to no avail. I only... Not only are they heavy, but they feel as if they're glued to the crystal. Even as I struggle to move, I feel my energy dimming as the crystal grows brighter and brighter. Yes, yes, yes! Now he's like freaking out as a boner. <laughs> I blink a few times as tears begin to sting my eyes. I bite my lip in an attempt to keep me myself from falling unconscious, and the effort only makes me taste my blood. Lucette! <gasps> it's Walt! Walt! Yeah, bitch! Okay! <laughs> Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a glimpse of Waltz by the door, his hands glowing as the, as he prepares to cast a spell. Waltz? Waltz's eyes meet mine, his expression contouring in anger, and he turns to glare at Mithros. This is madness, Smith. You're too late, Waltz. Just a little bit more, and the energy transfer will be complete. And my queen will be free from her prison. I won't let you do this! Waltz releases his spell at Mithras, who quickly conjures a shield to protect himself. I feel so weak. I feel my knees giving out. The next thing I know, Waltz stands beside me with a dagger. He drives the edge of the dagger into the Tenebrae's surface, cracking it slightly. And then I am free. Waltz catches me in his arms, just before my body hits the floor. Stay with me, Lucette. My body relaxes when I feel his arms around me. I squint up at his face, but his features are blurry. I have to blink a few times to clear my vision. I knew you would come back! I mean, of course you would. Thank you for trusting me. I will always come back to you, no matter the risk. Thank you. Don't speak, princess. Save your strength. How did you get in here? Didn't he have a teleporter? Like- <laughs> Whoa, what? Oh shit, everyone's here! It looks like we made it just in time. Her face steps through the hole in the wall and her, bur and her outbursts of magic created. She looks solemn. You. How dare you show your face here. You who tried to kill my beloved queen. Kill? Mythos raises his hand to cast a spell, but Parfait quickly freezes him in place with a flick of her wrist. I am surprised when I realize that Parfait is Lucius Bearer. Even in her weakened state, she, it seems she is a force to be reckoned with. Of course, even though she's weak, she still has like powerful magic. You can't mess with her. She turns to face me with a weak smile on her face. As the bearer of the crystal and Lucius, it is my duty to stop Hildur. Such was my goal even back then. Even the two of us are, were dear friends. While Parfait is speaking, Varg slowly moves towards with his cane. No, no, no! Oh, please don't kill her. Oh my god, I can't. No. <laughs> he just seems about ready to bring it down to the ground when Parfait turns in blaze and casts a spell. The magic hits the cane on the head, shattering our impact. Ooh, Varg, however, seems surprisingly calm. It's a good thing that wasn't the only weapon I had, huh? Varg suddenly charges towards Parfait. Something silver and sharp. No! Glints in his hand. Parfait doesn't even know when she casts another spell, knocking Varg back against the wall. Okay, thank God, Jesus. <laughs> The knife in his hand clatters to the ground. Varg staggers back to his feet. The mask covering his eyes falls from his face as he stands. When he looks up, I feel my blood turn cold. Fritz? Varg wags his finger at me, his smile crooked. Hmm, maybe I look like him a little, but you can't seriously think we're the same person, can you? I clutch, his wal I clutch Waltz's sh shirt be between my fingers as I stare. Everything begins to feel hazy once again. What is going on? Lucette? Lucette! I hear my father before I see him. When I turn, he is limping towards us in a pained expression on his face. What the hell happened? I can only assume that he somehow made it out of the cell, or that someone helped him out. Whilst his arms are still there to support me as I walk towards my father. Father reaches out to touch my, both of my cheeks. His warmth makes me flinch. You're cold! I I'll be fine. Father clenches his fist and turns to Mithros. It's over now, Mithros. Not quite. Oh shit! A bright light suddenly surrounds the tenor Brian and the whole room is engulfed in white. I should have killed you long ago, dear Gennaro. What? No! What did I just say? He said something nice to her. Oh my god, and he's dead. What? No! Oh, father! I am unable to see what has happened, but as soon as the light disappears, I see what horror had happened before me. 
I scream when I spot a large gash in my father's chest. Blood pours from the wound, blade from a blade of light. I catch my father in my arms as he stumbles back. Waltz quickly comes to stand beside me to help support him. Father! Now this kingdom is mine once again. The voice is familiar, but so but distantly so. It is a voice from my memories. I look up and suddenly there she is. My mother stands before me. Beautiful and regal. How the hell did she get out? What the heck? Her eyes are cold, lacking any uh, any kind of love as she looks over at me. Lucette. Welcome back, my queen. Here's your number one fanboy. <laughs> Mythos, who has somehow managed to escape from Parfait, is now down on one knee before mother. Helder. Hello, dear Faye. It's been a while. Parfait puts her hand on her chest as she begins to cough. She collapses to her knees. You have grown weaker since we last fought. Lady Parfait! Mother's eye snaps to Waltz and narrows. I see that the traitor is here too. I also see that you managed to reunite with my daughter. Mother flicks her wrist as she casts a spell. You will pay for what you did to me. Step back! I swear- If Parfait dies too, I swear! <laughs> Parfait quickly steps in front of us as an invisible bear just appears as Mother conjures her series of sharp ice projectiles. They bounce harmlessly off the shield, but I can feel the rumble in the ground as they tumble to the floor. Ugh! Parfait! Parfait is kneeling on the ground. Now I can see blood in her lips. Lucette? I look down at my father. His shirt soaked with blood, but his eyes are barely open. Father? I feel tears brimming in my eyes. The room fills with light, and this time emanating from the floor, slowly our surroundings begin to blur. Go then, run away, Parfait. That's all you've ever done. Parfait's voice is pressed and pain as she speaks. We will stop you, Hildur. The last thing I see is Mother's wicked smile, then the light swallows us whole. She teleported us back? Please tell me we're safe. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> when the light fades, we are back in the Martian. Parfait is still on the ground, though now she seems like she, she might sink into it. Lady Parfait! I'll be fine. Just call Rumpel quickly! Walt starts from the room immediately. Father, please hold on! My father's clothes are now dyed a thick crimson that stains my hands and dress. Moments later, Walt returns with Rumpel. He rushes over to the king and the moment he sees him. Mar Rumpel tears my father's shirt open, revealing a deep wound in his chest. He quickly looks over his body, then attempts to apply pressure on the wound, but the bleeding does not stop. He's lost too much blood. Can't you do something? I will do my best, but there is only so much I can do, princess. I cannot perform miracles. There's a faraway look in his eyes that says he's almost pained expression on his face. His helpless expression makes me panic surge even more. You call yourself a doctor? Oh, that's not- uh, I know she's in distress, but you know, th that's not Rumpel's fault, come on. Lucette, calm down. I cannot lose him, Waltz. I don't have much time left, Lucette. I turn to look down at my father, my eyes filling with tears. No, 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 don't say that, father. I wanted to see you become queen, but it seems that this is the end for me. I collapse beside father, and he reaches up, up a shaking hand to touch my wet cheek. Protect our kingdom. I can only nod at him. I will always be with you. I love you, Lucette, and I am proud that you are my daughter. Father smiles at me, and it is so genuine and warm that it brings fresh tears to my eyes. His eyes slowly close, but the smile never leaves his lips. Father? I shake him, but he does not react. No! No! I lean over my father, willing him to come back, to open his eyes, but he is no longer breathing. For the first time in my life, I cry, I cry for my father. What the hell? What did I just say? Come on, that's so messed up. You're like, <laughs> that's not fair. They just forgave each other, and all of a sudden, the guy's dead. <laughs> Ever since my father's death, I have locked myself into my room. I am filled with constant grief and pain, but have become numb on the inside. Even when I try to cry, tears won't come. Lucette, I brought you something to eat. I'm not in the mood to eat. Wallace sits on the tray and walks towards me. The blanket crumbles as he sits down beside me. Slowly, he wraps his arms around me and strokes my hair. What happened wasn't your fault, Lucette. He did what any father would do his first daughter. He did not deserve to die the way he did. From mother's hand. I know. I curl my fingers into Waltz's shirt. I don't want to lose anyone anymore, Waltz. Waltz can even show me my hair. It'll be fine, I promise. 
For now, you need to rest, he said. I will be here by your side until you fall asleep. He plants a kiss on my forehead and I close my eyes, relishing his warmth. Don't say that! Like, he's saying like, oh, don't worry, no one else is gonna die. I have a feeling someone else is gonna die too! Walt's hold is firm but comfortable. I sink into his arms as I fall into a dream of sleep. Yo, where the hell is Dolora? I haven't seen her. Days later, the palace announced his father's death. It isn't long before Alcaster is given his crown. The announcement of his uh, ascension comes with an explanation of the king's death. The palace paints me a criminal, telling the townsfolk that I was the one who killed the king. What a fucking bitch! So no, wait, so no one knows that the mother is back yet, right? I think that's what's happening. I am labeled a fugitive, and the royal family is officially declared missing. We have all been in hiding since then, the royal family included. Now it has been two weeks since father died. The longer time moves on, the more aware I become of one ga gaping realization. Mother has not shown herself to the public. Okay, okay. I wonder why though. What could she be plotting? I place my hand over my heart, willing the pain away. Every time I think of mother, I remember the sort of light that went through my father's body. Even enough time has passed. Even though I am suffering losses, I cannot stand idle. I have, for, I have a promise to fulfill. I will protect our kingdom. I am about to go back to my room when Parfait calls me. Dolores stands beside her. Oh, there she is. Lucette, can we talk with you? I look away, avoiding their eyes. What is it you want to discuss with me? It's about the Tenebrium. Despite Hilda's revival, it appears that the crystal's light is still dim. That can only mean one thing. Hilda is still weak. Still weak? Hilda was absorbing all of your powers when we found you. We interrupted the process. The crystal was not able to absorb all of the magic you now possess. That is why she is still weak. Also, there was something else that bothered me about the crystal. Something odd. Odd? A bearer has a very strong bond with the crystal, a mutual relationship of sorts, but that bond was absent when she returned. What are you saying? It seems as if the crystal is forsaking their bond. What? It seems even the crystal knows that Hildur, Hildur's time is calm and gone. Princess, the crystal has already chosen you as its next bearer. It's a small blessing, but it doesn't change the fact that Hildur is still the strongest witch. At least, that is what she wants us to think. Parfait and Delore exchange a glance. The crystal has chosen the next bearer, and you have just as much potential, if not even more. Delora turns to me. Her usual lax expression is more solemn. Are you ready to learn magic, Lucette? Magic that you will potentially use to defeat your mother. I have never used magic before in my life. I have never been raised as a witch. And using magic to defeat mother? I don't know. Well, regardless of what decision you make, we'll all be here to support you. Delora and I want you to know that. How is it that they're so willing to help me when I was the one that caused this whole mess? I... I need some fresh air. I begin to walk towards the door when I see Ophelia walk in from the tavern. Oh no! Our eyes briefly meet as she opens her mouth to say something and stops when I shake my head. You don't want to hear her blame me for her father's death. Certainly that must be what she's thinking. Ophelia frowns but does not speak. I quicken my pace, almost running as I head into the forest. Don't go by yourself! I feel like, like, Varg is, like, creeping in the shadows or something! The night is silent and calm, and the only sound I can hear is the gentle sway of the grass as I step through. Mother is back because of me. If I haven't revived her, father would still be alive. How am I supposed to face everyone knowing that? Walt has been trying to cheer me up. While I appreciate his company and concern, even he could not help me come to terms with my mistakes. I hear footsteps behind me. I turn to see Walt approaching with a frown on his face. Lucette, please, I'm not in the mood to listen to your reassurances again. Do I need you to tell me again that it was not my fault? But your father wouldn't want to see you like this. How would you know what my father wanted? I snap at him without meaning to, not bothering to hide my irritation in my voice. He'd want you to walk forward, not linger on in the past that cannot be changed. You've been distancing yourself from us since the king passed. Don't think that I haven't noticed. Why is that? Because this is the only way I can keep them safe. Dot dot dot. I don't wanna- cause We can't be like, what are you talking about? I'm, he already freaking knows, so. You know that I'll always be by your side, Lucette. Shouldering you- shouldering the burden will only worsen your pain. Worsen? I already know the pain of losing someone that I love. I have brought nothing but suffering to those around me. Can I get close to anyone again? They say put them in danger. I have already lost my father, and I do not want to lose anyone else. Especially not you, Waltz. Waltz's eyes widen as he stares at me. 
I want to show you something. Keep your eyes open, Lucette. You can't miss it. Maud snaps his fingers and golden orbs of light suddenly spring to life around us. Aww, what's he doing? I can only marvel at the orbs of light floating around us. They look like stars dancing through the night. It's beautiful. You cannot truly appreciate how bright a star- Oh my god, he's gonna call it a little star! I know what he's doing! <laughs> you cannot truly appreciate how bright a star is without darkness. Well, snaps his fingers again, and most of the lights go out. During difficult times, the, the light grows dimmer. He snaps again until only one light remains. When you're all alone, it grows even dimmer still. There are things that you cannot do on your own, otherwise you risk snuffing out your own light. Another snap and the golden orbs return, this time in greater numbers, and the lights are even brighter than they were before. You're not alone, Lucette. I love you, and it hurts to see you suffer alone like this. My heart is pounding so hard that I'm, I fear it might escape my chest. In this moment, it feels as, as if time has stopped, and it's just the two of us. All I can see is Waltz. As I stand here staring at him, I come to real realization. I love him. When did this happen? A few, after a few moments, I realize it does not matter. I stand on the tip of my toes so that I can cup Waltz's face in my hands. I move before I can even think, leaning over to place a light kiss on his lips. Aww! <laughs> That's sweet! But can I- like, I, I know they're best friends, so they always say there's feelings there, but it's just like, Lucid doesn't really remember him. That's, that's the only thing, like, the- for the sake of the relationship. If they just develop that a little more, then it'd be okay. I don't know, that's my opinion. I feel an arm around me as Waltz pulls me closer. The kiss becomes more heat and I feel a gentle flame sting in my stomach. Even my mind becomes foggy. I feel- Whoa, Jesus. All right, Waltz, want to calm down there? <laughs> I feel his tongue on my lips, but then I part them as he suddenly draws away, his face deep red. It's, sorry, I need to catch my breath. I feel the heat on his cheeks and I have to fight back my embarrassment. I just kissed Waltz. I look up at Walt, suddenly realizing how close he is to me. I quickly bury my face into his chest and hiding my embarrassment. Walt's chest rises and falls as he, as with a gentle laugh. You're so cute. I close my eyes, allowing his warmth to envelop me like a blanket. I love you, my little star. Oh! <laughs> that nickname is still cute. This is not just your battle anymore, Lucette. You don't have to carry this burden alone. So please, trust in me. Trust in us. I am overwhelmed, but Waltz's words makes me feel strange to the light, as if a weight has truly been lifted from my shoulders. I will. Thank you. We should get back now, or else everyone might get worried. Waltz places a soft kiss on my forehead and smiles at me as he pulls away. He extends a hand towards me. Let's go, my little star. I smile as I slowly take his hand. We walk back to the Martian hand in hand, momentarily forgetting about all the bad things that had just transpired. Chapter 8, Hope. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to end the episode right here. That was really sweet. I like that moment. It just, I just wish there was more development for the, the their feelings for one another. Because obviously it was there a long time ago because they're friends. But it's just like, since Lucette doesn't remember that much of Waltz, I feel like it, it needed to be more established before they got together. That's just my opinion. But otherwise, that was really nice. It's still messed up that the king died, though. What the heck was that? As soon as- as soon as he was like, nothing bad will happen, I'm like, this guy's dead. <laughs> anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Cinderella Phenomenon, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description. Get early access to videos, videos to Patreon only, the Discord server to come document a bunch of other stuff as well. Or you can support the channel for free with gothbox.com slash a girl in a game. All you have to do is make an account and open it on your mobile phone or tablet and follow the instructions on my gothbox page and you can tip real money to the channel that will help me keep this series going and keep the channel going as well. And I appreciate every single one of you who has been using it so far. And uh, yeah, please let me know in the comments what you guys think about this part so far. I'm just sad that the dad died because this is the only route where Lucette was actually forgiving him right away. Because the other route she was like, it's going to take time before I can talk to my dad or forgive him or whatever. This one, she was like, I forgive you. And then they had a nice moment and then he's dead. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! What?! What is he doing in the wardrobe? Are you serious right now? He he twitches and I recoil. It <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Jesus Christ! 